This is Mr. Holsey of 8 Squared's Officially Understood Science, and today we're going to be talking about organism relationships. So competition is where two species share a requirement for a limited resource. As we've discussed before, limited resources everywhere. Everything's a limited resource. Uh, and competition reduces the fitness of one or both species. Now, in biologic terms, the term fitness means the ability to survive and reproduce. So you may remember this from last year when we talked about Darwin. Now this competition can be intra-specific or inter-specific. Make sure you look at the words here. So intra-specific means within a species. Inter-specific means between two or more species. Um, this may not apply to you. One way I remember the difference here, there's this thing called intranet not internet but intranet and this is a closed web system that can't be accessed from the outside but then interspecific like internet is global and everyone can interact with it. Now, predation is a form of competition. This is where one species feeds on another, like the lion eating the zebra. So this enhances fitness of the predator, but reduces fitness of the prey. Once again, fitness means being able to survive and reproduce. Because the predator is killing the prey, the prey's fitness disappears because it can no longer reproduce. Then we have symbiosis. This is the close, the close interaction between two or more organisms of different biological species. And this is one of my favorite examples. We have this bird right there. I'm going to switch this like that. So we got a bird right there. That's actually, you would think that this crocodile is about to snap its jaws shut and eat that bird. But actually, the crocodile is allowing the bird to do this. It's picking out little specks of food caught in the crocodile's teeth. And so this is an example of symbiosis called mutualism because the crocodile is getting a dental checkup and the bird is getting a free meal. So there are three types of symbiotic relationships. We have mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Now, as we go through this, we're going to use a species scoring matrix. So if the organism gets a score of 100, it is benefited. If the organism gets a score of 50, it's neither benefited or harmed. It's neutral. It just doesn't care. And if it gets a zero, it's being harmed. So let's start off with mutualism.
Mutualism is where both biological species benefit from the close relationship that they have. For example, we have the hummingbird hawk moth, which gathers nutrients from the flower while it helps to pollinate. Uh, the hummingbird hawk moth gets a score of 100 and the flower gets a score of 100 because they're both benefiting. The moth gets food, the flower gets help with reproduction. Here we see another example, the sea anemone, and I just like Nemo, I can't say that word, uh, provides shelter and protective for the, uh, protection for the clownfish while the clownfish eats small invertebrates that are harm to the, uh, harmful to the sea anemone. Also, uh, the clownfish can lure in organisms that the uh, anemone, anemone wants to consume. So this is an example where both are definitely benefited. And just like we talked about earlier, the Nile crocodile and the Egyptian plover. So the Nile crocodile opens its mouth and the Egyptian plover goes in and cleans it of bits of food and leeches. So once again, mutualism is where both species are benefiting from this close relationship. So and now we're going to move on to commensalism. So if you notice when we started this, mutualism was green, meaning both benefit. But now we've moved to yellow, uh, which is going to show that we're going to enter more neutral territory. So commensalism is where one species benefits from the natural relationship and the other is neither harmed nor benefiting. Uh, most in most cases they don't even care they don't notice they don't care it's just kind of happening so let's start off with a simple example we have the barnacles that uh, and a sea turtle so the barnacles benefit by attaching themselves to the turtle's shell for a home and transportation the turtle is not benefiting or being harmed in this relationship. The turtle just goes on about its business. So the barnacle is getting all of the benefit here. So we have one benefiting. Another one is not benefiting, but it's also not being harmed. And that's the important difference between commensalism and parasitism is that in commensalism, the other the species one species is not being harmed or benefited in parasitism we're going to see that an organism is going to be harmed another example is the pea crab benefits from the oyster because it has a home and protection the oyster is neither benefiting or being harmed in this relationship so here we have the pea crab right there. It's getting a home and all that kind of stuff. So it's benefiting nice, nicely in this relationship, but the oyster is not benefiting at all, but it's also not being harmed. Another example here, um, is the epiphyte and a tree. So the epiphyte benefits from the sturdy tree because it's exposed to more sunlight by being higher up in the canopy. The sturdy tree is not benefiting or being harmed in this particular relationship. There are some examples where plants can be more parasitic in, in their relationships and kill other plants while climbing up. Uh, using thigmotropism, but in this case, it is simply a plant that is benefiting while the tree is not benefiting or being harmed. So you can see our score indexes right here.
Now let's take a look at parasitism. So parasitism is where one species of the natural relationship benefits and the other species is harmed. So in this case, we have hookworms uh, that gain nourishment in the intestines while the human body is being harmed. You see the hookworm gets all the benefit and the human is being harmed. Uh, one thing to, to note about parasitism, in many cases, it's the parasite is not going to kill the host and the reason for that is the parasite needs the host if the host is dead the parasite no longer gets food and so in many cases they will make the host sick uh, it can lead to the shortened lifespan for the host but for the most part the parasite is not going to kill the host it will harm the host, but it will not kill the host. There are some cases, though, where it will. And here is one of those cases. Uh, so what you're seeing right here is actually a caterpillar. Now this caterpillar is typically black, but you see all the white things on there. That is actually wasp eggs. So the wasp eggs gain a home before they are hatched. And after they hatch, they actually feed on the caterpillar while it's still alive. Uh, so the caterpillar does die as a result of this relationship. Uh, but the amount of insects in order to infect is, is incredibly large. But the wasp eggs are getting all the benefit and the caterpillar is definitely getting none because it dies. Then we have something we're all too familiar with, mosquitoes. Uh, mosquitoes gain nourishment while the human loses its blood and is susceptible to different diseases um, and itchy bumps. So the mosquito is getting all of the benefit here and the humans are getting none of the benefit. So the organism that benefits in parasitism uh, is called the parasite. The or organism that is harmed is called the host. And once again, the parasite usually will not kill the organism it feeds on. And that's going to do it for our tutorial on organism relationships. This again, this has been Mr. Holsey with A Squared Sufficiently Understood Science. Remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of our tutorials. Catch you next time.